All right, so we're back. I'm Sigmaster Luke, and this is what we're doing. We're hooking up events to show when the match starts and when the match ends, and who the winners are and what your role is when the game starts. Okay, so we have this remote event that we put in replicated storage. Let's uh, make a variable for that. All right, event. So, hmm, I can't remember exactly what the, uh, event is called, so I'm going to go look at it real quick. In the object browser. Let's see. It's an event, so it's yellow. On client event. On client event. Alright, so dot 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 is our tuple. If you remember from the uh, tools tutorial, we do the same thing. We plug that in here. If tuple one is equal to results, then. So we haven't yet sent this information. We haven't coded it to send information yet, but we're just going to code it to receive it first and then we're going to then we're going to handle um sending it. Okay. So there's two things that, is, that you're going to be sent, or <laughs> that you could be sent, else if, sorry. Uh, either you're being sent that the game has ended, and you're going to be sent some game results, or you've been sent information telling you what you are, meaning that a new, new round is starting. So let's make some GUIs for these real quick. Okay, so to make these GUIs, we're going to, so we have our intermission label, let's see. Let's uh, we're we're gonna hmm, we're gonna start a new one. We're gonna insert a new uh, text. Yeah, we're gonna new text label. We're gonna call this class prompt, and hmm, we're gonna set its size to something like three forty. Offset by one eighty five. Oh, not one thousand eight hundred fifty. One eighty five. Okay, and this is going to go in your middle of your screen. So we use position scale to point five, point five for x and y, and you subtract half of its size. So it's minus one seventy. What's that? Yeah, one seventy. And here it'd be minus 192. I mean 92, sorry. Okay. Yes, it's centered. Cool. Okay. And um, we don't want text in the middle. So maybe we won't even be using this for its text. Uh, so let's just get rid of the text for now. Um, the border on it could be bigger just to make it look a little bit nicer. So there's a nice property here. Set that to 4. Boom. It's got a border around it. It's kind of nice. Um, so let's make it a little bit brighter. I think it's a little bit too dark. Cool. Um, hmm. 
What can we do here? I think that's good actually. And let's add the content to it. So let's uh, put another text label inside of this. Make the background transparency one so you don't see it. Oops, wrong thing. Control Z. <laughs> the text label I just made. So the background transparency to one. Transparency to one. Um, we're going to call this one class name. This is going to be telling you what your class is. You are the mad bloxer. All right, and it's going to span across this window. So we're going to set the X scale and size to one. And the Y offset to 30. And it's a little bit too high up there. So we're going to move it down. And I'm not liking the font. So we're going to change that. Hmm, what to change it to? Source sounds bold. Um, 36 probably. Oh yeah, that's like perfect. And font color. I've already found good colors and this color is 117, comma 255, comma 156. Ooh, needs a border. So we're going to add some stroke. Uh, right now it's set to completely transparent. We're going to set to 0 0.2, which means it's almost not transparent. So let's try 0.3. Cool. Okay, you are the mad bloxer. The A shouldn't be capitalized. Let's change that back. There we go. Okay, and now let's put a little bit description or like uh, an objective right here. So I'm going to copy this. Paste it in here. Ooh. Uh, don't like where it is. Okay. Class description. And this one is going to be positioned to sixty. It's gonna be starting down here. And it's gonna size is gonna be from the top. To the bottom so one scale minus 60 so I want it to be from here to here so I do is I set it Y position to here its scale is its total width or its total height minus 60 so it fits in perfectly and um, the text might wrap and we don't want wrapping text being really close to the borders so we're actually going to change the um, horizontal scale to 0.9 and then to center that again and add 0.1 to the scale and position like that oh not 0.1 sorry 0 0.05 okay and this font doesn't look good for a description so let's change it back to some more more reasonable um, let's type in some text here so we know what we're dealing with um, your goal is to blocks all uh blocks every player. Mm. I don't like every player, it sounds weird. Everyone exclamation point. Your goal is to blocks everyone. Okay. Um text color twenty seven comma forty two comma fifty three looks is the default so if you make a new label, this is what it would be at. Let's get rid of the stroke. So set that to one. Um, the font is too big, way too big. Set to 18. Um, and also if you notice, when it was set to 36, it's it's falling outside of our box. Like we don't ever want that. So there's a property, if you scroll all the way down, called text wrapped. Click that. And it wraps your text and makes sure that it tries to it tries to keep your text within the borders, so you can see it moved everyone to the next line, so it's not bleeding out. Um, but it doesn't matter because we're just going to be setting it to um, font size 18, anyways. But for if if we want to type in a longer description, it would fit nicer. Okay, cool, cool. 
we've got this one done and I think the um, the result prompt could be very very similar so I'm just gonna copy it copy the class prompt uh, make it invisible by changing visibility uh, to false make sure it's visibility that you're setting um, and when you set visibility every child under it also becomes invisible or visibility set to false okay now I pasted it because we're gonna be changing this one to results a result prompt result prompt result description result name and let's see the name will probably be something like uh, players win oops no slash get rid of that and hmm no, it's probably gonna be blocks or again so it'd probably be something like a blocks or wins and the text would be the uh, description would probably be something like uh, all players were blocks period so when the game ends it will say something like this just so you know what's going on okay so now we have these two GUIs made for the ending and the starting let's program them okay so results the first thing that we're gonna get in in the information is either it's a result or it's a class change and the second tuple we're gonna receive is gonna be um, who won if it's a result or uh, what your class is if it's a game starting and you need to know what your class is so if tuple 2 blocks or win if it's a blocks or win match so this is if the game ends if it's a blocks or win match then oh you know what we gotta <laughs> we made all these GUIs we gotta make references for them let's do that real quick So I'm just waiting for these GUIs that we made and the three things underneath them. Um, waiting for the result prompt, then the result name thing that's under it, and the result description, which is under that. And then the class one is very similar, so I'm lucky enough to be able to copy this. Paste it here, and just copy paste class everywhere that you see result. Result prompt to result name, result class. I mean, <laughs> description class. Okay. Um, gotta also put that here. Just copy pasting. Okay. So we have these. Uh, now let's go set the stuff. So if the. These are results. If the blocks are win. Result name dot text. Capital T in text. Mad blocks are wins. And if he wins, let's also set the text color up there to a different color. So Again, these are colors I've already tested and I like. So feel free to copy them or put in your own colors. And 
And now we're saying the description text. And if the blocks are, if it isn't a blocks or win, then that means that the player is won. So, let's uh, type in the player win here. In fact, the player win is going to be very similar to this one, so I'm just going to copy that, paste it here. <laughs> okay, so if, if the isn't the blocks or that wins, then the players win. So, players win. Oh, yeah. And, an, again, a color that I found fitting, 111 divided by 255. 149 divided by 255 and 1. Okay. Cool. So that updates the information on that little card. We got to make sure that this card shows up and tweens across the screen. So what's going to happen is this, where is it? Class uh, result prompt. Set it to true and you can see it again, visible to true. Um, so it's right here right now. So we're just going to update the information. But we also want to do something a little bit nice, so we're going to have it slide in from the left, and then wait a few seconds, and then slide away. And that's really not that hard either. So right here, uh, we want to make sure it's visible. Because in our, um, while we're making it, we're turning them to invisible, and we're setting visibility to false, like right now, just so we can see. Um, and there's also the other one in class prompt. Um, and we turn these off, but in the game, we're going to want to make sure they're on. So we just set that right there. Now we're going to want to set its starting location. Oops. So we want to start off the screen to the left. And that position would be UDIM. Oh, yeah. So UDIM2 is like the location for GUIs, location or size for GUIs. Um, and we're going to be setting this to be negative 400, to be 60 off the screen, to the left, still going to be centered vertically, so that's negative 192, 0.5 and negative 192. And we're going to want it to tween to the center of the screen, so here are Roblox. You make the game.